Welcome back as the Jones Girl presents Salt Shaker Conversations. My name is Kiara Jones and I am Crystal Jones Walton III, Dr. Carmen Jones Harris, Dr. Edna Jones Moore. And Salt Shaker Conversations is conversations with the Jones Girls that empower transparency, authenticity uh, through meaningful dialogue. So we're going to be picking up where we left off last week. Last week was love, marriage, and divorce. And we were talking about our different perspectives and our different processes. Um, and we left on the question of faith and how our faith had been processed through our marriages or, you know, in my case, the divorce. And I wanted to hear about your process because I know yours was a little different uh, Dr. Carmen you go ahead and tell us so we um, love you Chris if you have seen <laughs> the if you caught us last week um, Dr. Uh, Edna and Crystal share these powerful stories of love and being at the pinnacle of it and how it really expanded their faith mine too expanded my faith um, our road to getting together was a little different um, we met in college, but um, I don't like the way y'all snickering at this table. I don't. Now go and tell the people. <laughs> so you, at least you didn't have an arrest record. Yeah, man. <laughs> but go ahead. So I, while in college, was dating someone else, as was he, and the Lord revealed to me in a dream. I had a dream because I was at a turning point in the relationship that I was in. And the Lord revealed to me through a dream that I was going to marry my husband. That was really one of the first times that I had heard God, you know, or seen God in that way. And I remember getting up the next day, literally breaking up with my boyfriend, my damn boyfriend, because you I were knew. Engaged, weren't you? Yeah. yeah well, you were engaged that that's yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah, said, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I was just saying. That I had her tell her I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but so, but I broke up <laughs> with my then boyfriend like literally the next day. And we've never spoken again since then. I haven't, no, I haven't spoken to that person since then. So, um, no bad blood, but just we just like kind of went our separate ways. But as as a as a person of faith, I knew then that this is what God's got for me. I was super excited. I was, I too was idealistic. I had watched my parents' marriage and different marriages. I had, you know, the David Bridal, and they just went bankrupt, but the David Bridal's <laughs> book, they oh, did. Oh, they, 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 like, they did. Oh, that's you so know, with everything, because this was going to be the pinnacle of my life. And I just assumed that God was going to move immediately in that relationship, and we were going to be together and live happily ever after. Well, after time, as time went on. <laughs> as you popped up in places where he was going. Did Lord, your mother teach you that? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it was interesting. What made me do it was because it was twofold. One, I knew what God had said. Right. So I was like, I know this is what God said is true. Right. I know it. I know it. And what's crazy, I had shared this publicly with people. With anyone with who it, witnessed I would tell them yes. because and I knew. And conversation. Yes. It was, I mean, I held the salt yes. and I would tell it. I yes. would tell it. I would tell it. Yes. And, and I wouldn't mean, you hand over the salt? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew I was going to marry this guy. Yeah. Now, mind you, we may have had two or three conversations. We were friends, but not like hang out, whatever. It would be, hey, Carmen, hey, this is But not extent. even friends, cool. Right, we like were cool, cool, right? Yeah. Like, I could, if I needed a favor, he wouldn't be the first person. I mean, we, we didn't run in the same circles. That just wasn't our thing. But God had said, this is the person you're going to marry. So I'm just like, okay, when he coming? He taking too long. Mm -hmm. Let me help him out. He was in a fraternity, you know, I mean, so I, you know, he's in a fraternity, and I would, I remember one incident of, like, uh, standing outside of one of their events with one of my girlfriends, so you got to check your circle, too. Mm -hmm. Got to check your circle. Yeah. Yes. You could, I, but I, I appreciate my girls because it was them standing in the trenches with me yes. that helped me not lose yes. faith. But we stood outside of the, the event, and I waited. You got like an hour and a half. Just waited, because I was too saved to go I'm into sorry, the what event. what were you waiting for for an hour and a half? I was waiting for him to walk outside. Okay. I was too saved to walk into the event. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I stood by the door. Okay. <laughs> There See, that's, that's, a, that's a whole that's lesson in and of itself. I'm too saved to go in. But I'm, but I'm gonna stand right here by this door. Wow. And I'm away. Yes. I'm away. And I remember standing outside, and it had been an hour and a half, and people are coming in and out. And 
a, a old high school classmate who I hadn't seen since high school happened to walk up at the same time. He says, hey, Carmen. I was like, oh my gosh, how are you? And we embrace, and while we're embracing, my husband, well, he wasn't my husband then, comes out the door. And he's looking at me like you outside this club hugged up with a man. <laughs> <laughs> and you call yourself saved. <laughs> wow. And so, but what I learned from that is that my efforts were not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. right. So I Wait, they, I'm sorry. You learned at that moment. Well, no, right. well, no. no, 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 it took some years. It took, oh, well, no, okay. I mean, at the end, because that was closer to the yeah. end. Oh, that was okay. closer. Because okay. what I was about to say is I have a million stories like that. Yes. That's that okay. I can tell you okay. of, of the attempts to keep trying to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know what, and I remember the day when I said, you know what, God, I give up. I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm done. I'm done trying to create this space. And if it's going to happen, it's going to be on you. And I am not lying. I got a random call one day. And it was, hey, how are you? I thought about you. Well, I'm coming in town. I just want to see you. And then, like, the relationship developed. It was when I took my hands off. We were married uh, a year late. Right. Because it was, I mean, I could not make it happen. Now, on 20 some odd years on the other side, I understand all of it now, but um, when we got married, so of course here I am still with the idealistic, like mm -hmm. we're going to do this. We get married, and we too had what I call the, the communication issues, two strong-minded, will people mm -hmm. who are going to just, I'm just, I ain't giving up because you ain't my daddy, mm -hmm. and you ain't going to make me because you can't make me. And, and I am an avid lifetime watcher. Avid. Yes, if you've is. ever avid yeah, lifetime watcher, I, I hate I lifetime love lifetime to this day yes. because of you, and, and I refuse to watch. And, I refuse. It's, I hate the logo. It's still my favorite. <laughs> I hate it. It's still my favorite. <laughs> when a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh -huh. I, I, so, so I, it shaped my thinking, what I seen, and so I remember we were having one of our regular arguments, and and and. I was having one of our regular arguments, and I walked over to the window and looked out the window. <laughs> In the dramatic scene. Yes, okay. because on Lifetime, anytime the woman is upset, she walks to the window, she looks out the window, and the man is supposed to come behind her, put his hand on her shoulder, and turn around, and they make up. So here we are, having this argument, and I'm thinking, if I could just get to the window. <laughs> So I walked to the window, and I'm looking out the window. <laughs> and you're waiting, and, and nobody waiting. came. And I looked behind me, he was gone. <laughs> it was wow. at that moment that wow. I was like, God, I waited this long, and you gave me this man. I don't understand why mm -hmm. you would do that to me. Right. I did what you told me to do. Yeah. Now, he ain't tell me to show up at the place. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I waited, waited. and uh -huh. I'm with the person yeah. that yeah. you said yeah. I'm supposed to be yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. and it, this is happening to me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I would say he was so cold. Like, he was not an emotional, he was not. And I would say, man, you're so cold. But here's, here's the flip side of, of, of understanding the process. I would call him so cold, and it would make me less emotional. Cause like, it, like I interpret like emotion as a way. I, I won't even call it manipulation, but a way to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I just go, ah, I'm just go cry, and he would just look at me like, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. And so over time, it made me like, you need to suck up those tears and learn mm -hmm. to speak what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And so I always give him credit for even my career trajectory because it is that disposition and demeanor that is effective in leadership. So that is how, even how I lead. That's considered one of the effective traits of leadership. So I always tell him, you made me into this person. You were the one that helped me to learn to articulate, mm -hmm. learn to speak. He would coach me on speaking. He would coach me on these types of things. So, so our marriage became like this partnership almost to like create like this, this dynasty type thing. Um, interestingly, now we coach couples from all over the world at fulltimemarriage.com where we do monthly sessions with couples where we are coaching them mm -hmm. around communication. We are coaching them around intimacy. Mm -hmm. We are coaching them around partnership. But it took 
me going through the the the, the weeds and really mm-hmm. digging in. And you want to talk about faith being challenged? At one, I mean, I blamed God. Yeah. I said, now you gave me this man. Right. You That's know, right. like Adam and Eve. Yeah. yeah. This woman you gave me. And I realized we grew together, but but my process wasn't as loving. Right? It wasn't as nurturing. Would I say he's phenomenal? Yes. I, I used to uh, joke with women, and i say, uh, if you're going to leave, I ain't going to fight you for custody of the children. You get these kids, mm-hmm. and I'm going to show up, and I'm going to skip my child support payments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, She's this is right. Wow. Right, because I'm like, I'm, that's not going to be my story. So, But, but as <laughs> we have emerged and become to learn mm-hmm. the rules of communication mm-hmm. and learn the rules of love and learn the ro- rules, I, too, would be disappointed. Um, I think it was the last session that you had asked um, – uh, uh, Edna, if she had left the process, mm-hmm. right? I too am better because of the process. And yeah. my faith has been strengthened to yeah. see the work of God mm-hmm. that you took a couple that I would consider we weren't in shambles, we weren't fighting in the streets mm-hmm. publicly. You know, we weren't doing mm-hmm. that. But you took this couple to be leading other couples and discipling other groups. Right. So what is the first thing that leads to change? Uh, admission. Oh, you have okay. to admit uh-huh. that okay. that that mm-hmm. something has to give. I can remember the day because we 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 teach a session on this in the full time marriage group where we talked about every Friday at four thirty. It was like the, the alarm go off. Oh, it's time to break up. Okay, let's break up. <laughs> this is what? Let's, let's just let's just fight. <laughs> <laughs> now that's symbolic. That's not actual, but it spoke to the frequency of the the, the disagreements. And you're just like, and I remember standing in the hallway and saying, you know what? I'm just not going to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just not. I'm just, I don't, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do it. And it's so funny because I remember the next time. Friday at four thirty, me, right. and he's looking at me like it's. <laughs> where your, where your sparring gloves? Oh my god! And oh I just god. looked at him, and I was like, nope. And he looked, and I remember him looking like, but what were you doing? How are we supposed to? Do? Do? <laughs> we supposed to what? And I and I I I just said I'm not, yeah. I'm just not. Yeah. And then it went from that like that to. Okay, that was the awkwardness. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, let's, what would happen if we got on the same page? Mm-hmm. What would happen if we start Beautiful. actually discussing yeah. things before? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What if we made plans? What if we actually considered the other person? Mm-hmm. So when that started happening, but it took first admitting yeah. that I'm mm-hmm. a participant in the foolishness. Uh-huh. I mean, I had to say that. I couldn't just mm-hmm. say, it's him, it's him, it's him. Mm-hmm. No, because I was showing up at 4.30 just like he was. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. took admitting my role first mm-hmm. before we could turn the curve and then get to what God intended. Right. And I think for, you know, and I believe processes are based on personality. Mm-hmm. Because because I had never experienced friction like that mm-hmm. ever. I was smooth. You know, mm-hmm. I, I knew how to glide in and glide out. I'm like, wait a minute, the smoothness is not working with this guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, the lines ain't working with this one. Okay, wait, my magic ain't working with this one. Mm-hmm. So the process was for me too. Mm-hmm. Like to say, no, put you your authentic, you can't manipulate way. this. Mm-hmm. You can't snap your finger or you know say this or do that you got to walk this out but the benefits of walking it out are so much greater but you don't always see that when you're in it i was listening to an interview of michelle obama the other day i don't know if any of you caught it the uh, it's on netflix carry. yeah the, the light we carry that's mm-hmm. on netflix for, for those of you who know um yeah it was actually uh portions of that was really good i haven't finished it yet but she was saying some really really poignant things but she was uh making you know she was like um people don't know she said this generation doesn't know what travailing looks like in a relationship really Mm -hmm. and so you you have the little hashtag relationship goals and they're you know they're posting pictures of her and uh you know president obama and old relationship goals and she was like you don't even know i was mad at him in that picture Mm -hmm. you don't even know i i fell out with him in the car like you you but you don't see any of that all you see is a highlight reel Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people's expectations Mm -hmm. are the highlight reel of Mm -hmm. the lives that they see like they'll see your life they'll see your life they'll see your life and then they see the highlight reel of when you're coming to church or when you're traveling and when you're doing but they don't know 
the trenches. They don't mm-hmm. know yeah. those things. And I think, um, you know, we're, we're, cause we at 15 minutes, I don't know how we're going to get there, but, um, just, just even how we prepare mm-hmm. the next generation for what marriage actually looks like from God's point of view. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to go back to God's original intention yeah. for, for, for man and woman to come together, yeah. what they are supposed to build, yeah. what that is supposed to look like. Because yeah. I was explaining to men, you know, I think I just called Danielle the other day, <laughs> and I don't even know if she was doing anything. I said, you know what, I'm it just going to talk. And it didn't, it didn't even matter, matter didn't because... Matter. I think I talked to her for an hour and a half. We just sat there, and I was just like, you know what? I see certain things, and it boils my blood. So one of the questions that I want to phrase as women, and I know you guys are married now, but we have a lot of singles. Um, mainly, and, and uh, what we give here in, in, in Salt Shaker Conversation is a faith-based approach mm-hmm. because all of us are faith-based. We have a relationship with Christ, so everything that we do is based off of the Word of God and God's point of view. I think that's very important uh, to say. But when we're talking to singles, can we speak to even the culture, even in the body, in the, in the church, of, of the pressures that we have put on women. Absolutely. About what it is that they supposed to be doing yeah. in order to get the man. I remember yeah. I went to, you know, we used to have this, we, we grew up in in, in, yeah, the, in a church. church. In the church. Traditional church, <laughs> loved it, absolutely. And there was women's department. And I remember one of the ladies gave advice and said, a piece of man. <laughs> It's better than no man at all. I don't remember that. And no you man. wouldn't be, you wouldn't, you wouldn't probably remember that. No. And so mama used to make jokes about this little piece of advice, but she would say, this is what the older women would teach them. And, you know, tell them all the hoops that they had to jump through in order to keep your man at home. You know, you know and, and there are some truths to that, but the overall or the overarching idea is that a piece of man <laughs> is better than no man at all. I, is the faulty premise. Are we, well, are I, we still giving that advice? Well, I hope, no, because, no, 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 no. I'm not okay. giving that advice. I'm just saying, but this no. is the premise. I, like, I is mean, that in of, the single culture I, now? I don't think that is that, that, that is, okay. that wouldn't be the voice of the church. I think that at, at the church that we were uh, more silent um, versus the transparency, which is one of the benefits of salt shaker conversations. Right. Um, the church that I attend, my husband and I, of course, uh, uh, lead the, the couples and, you know, we do all these things. And we had a very transparent conversation with couples and singles okay. about singleness, okay. about what does God say about singleness. And sometimes we shy away from it or we make large general statements. Just live right. Well, what is right? Right, right, right. Right. right, right what does right. what does that look like in real time? With me having um, been in a relationship and I'm living with my significant other, and I just got saved, right? Mm-hmm. What does that look like lived out for me? What does that look like? Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm now d- divorced yeah. and I am wanting to reemerge and date someone in the church, but I got married unsaved, so I never dated as a as a say believer. What does that look like? So those specific conversations conversations need to be had. I, and this is my issue. I'm sorry, my dialect don't change. This is my issue. Because the conversations are being had in the church, but it is the foolishness that's being said. Now, for example, I, okay. no, no. Give me no. a recent let me, one. Let me give me a recent one. Give me a recent, recent, one. recent example. Give me a recent one. I heard a, a, a pastor mm-hmm. talk about, uh, you know, um, because I'm going to give it a twofold. Because to the women, they say, y'all see, that's why you ain't married. Because she sees you, you, you done friend zoned everybody. So this is the same, you know. So this part one of the sermon. You know, we done friend zoned everybody. And you know, this good, this good hard working man right. over here. And you won't, be, yeah, won't, won't, you won't pay him no attention. All he need <laughs> is a good woman. And, you know, whatever, whatever. This right. is the But then part B of the same sermon, the pastor says, well, man, you make sure that you got to be attracted to a nine. You got to make sure she distant. And I'm like, wait a minute. Well, no, so, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. Well, so let me. I'll that's let a me, devil standard. I'll respond to that is, with this. So, oh, well, so get clear. To Histor- <laughs> yeah. Historically, we know the loudest voices in churches have been men. Yeah. 
And so when you get that skew or bias, right, um, opinion and advice, it's going to lean towards the favor of the man. Mm -hmm. So scripturally, right, we're, we're okay, faith-based. We um, Titus tells us the women is supposed to teach the women, mm -hmm. right? But it, it is not with the absence of a man can't teach you anything because your, your dad's taught you a lot mm -hmm. of things, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it is, in fact, who has safe authority over you in that intimate area of your life. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain qualifications because even in Titus, it talks to the wisdom of the person. Mm -hmm. Being godly counsel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Teaching women how to love their husbands. Mm -hmm. And you know, I always say this. I say it's not that we don't emotionally love them. It's just when he tripping and you fighting every mm -hmm. four thirty, like 4.30 every week, it's like, now how am I going to love him through, through this? So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, and I, I hear you because so much of, like the majority of my friends are single. Mm -hmm. That's not common, I know, but the majority of them are single. And their frustration has been the pressures that have been put on mm -hmm. them. And it is, how do I navigate this ungodly counsel. Right. Because I ain't doing none of it. Yes, because you create a culture in the mm -hmm. church pick me. where you yes. Yeah. And and not only pick me, but you're competing with your sister. Yeah. And then you're coddling the men and dumbing down yourself to be less maintenance. Right. And so this is all an attack on your identity. And I think so much of what we've made women responsible for is men's self control. Yeah. So then and their maturity. So, there you go. So I, and, come on. And I, no, yeah, yeah, and I, I feel I, 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 I just. It's heckless. I just. I just believe. I believe as believers, because we're talking about the church right. culture, it is our responsibility as individuals yes. to grow. Yes. And if we are looking to those in leadership to give us wisdom on marriage, to give us wisdom on anything, we should inspect their fruit. Exactly. Now, I know in the culture, it's common for us to get advice from famous people yeah. who have been married numerous times mm -hmm. just because they have money and they're popular, it's okay. And it's like, and that has really influxed into the church. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we're not sanctified, we're not set apart mm -hmm. from the world. You get a lot of this carnality when it comes to ungodly counsel like that's ungodly counsel and I think so much of what we have to be mindful and intentional mm -hmm. of when we're talking to singles is to first and foremost like I said I'm, I'm not a prototype of any kind but what I'm saying is go to God for what his relationship status is for you thank you because if mm -hmm. there's singlehood and it exists and if it's marriage and that exists you go to your creator and ask him which one am I yeah and have the relationship enough in the ear to hear that when he speaks to you, you know that what he said is for you. Yeah. And I think so much of what we've gotten away from as the church is community to where we don't even know how to fellowship with each other mm -hmm. without putting a pressure. Yeah. You ain't married. What's wrong with you? Da, 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 da. And it's like, it's so much segregation and division. And that was never God's heart. Mm -hmm. I love the movie The Chosen. You got me watching it. And it was never relationships that is that disqualified people. Right. What disqualified people was the people. Right. They walked away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can we look to Jesus and to love that way? Mm -hmm. To not have so much division. Like, not practically, right? So that's the mindset. But, but practically, I understand the influence we have as women, right? Um, we are always taught how we abuse that influence. And it even happens in church mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we have grossly and grotesquely use that against women mm -hmm. and so we have these standards now where it's just like she needs to be this she needs to be that okay well he needs to meet that mm -hmm. because this is God's daughter as much as you're his son right and so I think if we take mm -hmm. mutual responsibility yeah. mm -hmm. as believers and say you know what I am doing this relationship or stepping into this relationship to honor God mm -hmm. and not my flesh not because culture is telling me this yeah, is what I need go. to do this is what God has ordained for me 
-hmm. I think we'll have a different attitude. And that's the I, thing I want. Let me let me because I'm gonna pick it back off a important point you just made because with all of the things and the research that I was doing and kind of looking and seeing what was being said in the conversations, not one person. These I mean, I'm talking about preachers, pastors, first lady, whoever they male and female, anybody. Mm -hmm. Not one person said consult God. Not one, I have yet to hear somebody say, mm -hmm. consult the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But it Every, could be that they're making an assumption. No, I don't that. think so. Because well, Let me tell you why I don't think so. It is because when they're doing their master classes, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm coming down your road. <laughs> when, when I'm, wait, wait, you're not. wait, no, wait, you're wait, not. wait, no, wait, no. When you're doing your, no, I'm not talking to you. Uh, no, I know. And I'm Jill no, because I'm just talking about when you're doing, no, I, I know what I'm saying. Go ahead. When you're doing your master classes, we got to come back. Um, when you're doing your master classes and all of this, while that is cool and you're giving them a list of the criteria that they need to check off, check off, check off, check off, make sure you did this and what you bring to the table, da, 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 da. If you fail to ask that one question, did you consult the Holy Ghost? The whole list means nothing. But what I'm saying I, is, if you are talking to, to okay, hold on one second. But if you are, uh, uh, you're referring to pastors and first ladies, and right? Because like I ain't talking about. But that's what I'm world. saying. I don't have that so if you're talking to people who are in the church, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they're making yes. an assumption that you already know you should ask God and do mm. these things. But I understand what yeah. you're saying, and I hear you yeah. saying you cannot make that assumption, right. and you need to specifically call out and specify. Seek God and then do these things. That's what I'm saying. So, so I was I, the, adding the that. The point I wanted to make even before Crystal and before, because you cut me off twice. I should have. You not, you so, not. Have. But I, I do want to say this. I do want to say this. Um, when you're talking about even the who that's on the platform, uh, right. we always consult God. But you have to consider age and context, too, because okay. a, lot of, a lot of things were passed okay. down as traditions um, or as ways and wisdoms, not necessarily aligning with the word of God, not, not going against it, right. but just wisdoms. Right. I remember the, the lady told me in church, I had on a, a, a what do you call it, cap, cap, cap sleeve mm -hmm. shirt, and she said, well, honey, well, wear your blazer. And I'm like, it's 99 degrees outside. What right. blazer? Well, you don't want no man looking. And I'm like, if he's turned on by an armpit, yeah, okay. we got a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. I have to think about, but, but was what she's saying a piece of wisdom that I could have taken and applied in a different way? Yes. So consider age of the people, because you have okay. to consider that. If a person's like 85, you they probably not, you know, yeah, so you consider I age. You. I, I have you. to consider context, right? Uh -huh. If I have to consider the context by which they are saying what they are saying. Okay. Sometimes it comes across as hard or out of place or inappropriate, okay. but maybe the context can be applied in a different place. I always consult the word of God. And the last piece I want to say is um, like the pressure and offense, like when a person gets offended, the, the, the statement is we take offense. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing to put that on me. I can choose not to put that on me mm -hmm. because I can choose. Mm -hmm. to, we take offense. Nobody gives offense. We mm -hmm. take it. That means it's set there for me to choose to take, mm -hmm. and I take it. So if the word of God is my litmus test, right, right the litmus by which I know, and I am hearing uh, information that may not be as uh, linear to what I feel like, can I find some truth in that? If not, I discard it. I don't have to take every word that's said. Mm -hmm. I can go to Titus. I can go to uh, other scriptures in the Bible that may talk about the application and the role of a wife and then seek and even allow the Holy Spirit, this is the first time we see it, yes. this, this, yes. this, the, allow the Holy Spirit to lead me where I need to go. Right. Um, but I cannot put the onus and responsibility exclusively on the people up front no. for my Absolutely outcome. Not. Right. No, no, no. I'm not, and, and that's yes. not what I was Absolutely saying. Not. That's not what I was saying at all. And so I'm just going to round this up because that's not what I was saying at all. But I, as as leader, because we have so many, we were, I would just uh, uh, Friday giving this comment to your husband um, um, when he was giving some advice about certain things. I said, when you have sheep mm -hmm. and you have people and they're clinging and, and I'm like, we got to teach the people how to hear from the Holy Ghost. How, you for need to get themselves. in your work for yourself yes. because you're going to need instruction. So we are going to have to put a pin in Ooh. this. Honey. This conversation okay. can go and go and go. We might have to do it by three. I don't know. But we are done. We will see you guys next week. We are the Jones Girl. This is Salt Shaker Conversations where we are the salt of the earth having 
Dialogue. Dialogue. Yes. See you next week. <laughs> Definitely.